Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, this video right here that you see on my screen, <coughs> how to turn a bad debt deduction into a credit. Now, this particular video, and I forget, it, it, it's not showing you how many views on this side, which makes no sense. Oh, there it is. Almost 400 views. Um, let me make sure y'all understand something. This video has no audio. No, wait, 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 wait. No audio. What do you mean this video has no audio? This video has no audio. But how could it not have any audio? Why would you do a video with no audio? I mean, don't your system allows you to know that you're recording audio? You see this right here? Ladies and gentlemen, do you see this? This is the audio. This shows you that the audio, but I just tried doing a video to let you guys know about this. Just tried doing a video to tell you guys about this. Spent almost 15 minutes talking and this frame right here was zero, 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 all four zeros up here. That's what happened to the other video. For some reason, the system is changing the ratios, but I re-looked at this video and let's see you guys can't see it here because they're not showing it but oh no no you can't see it hold on open that back up stop let's put this out of the way let's get back here do you see let me show you how to, how to understand this ladies and gentlemen so you get it see that microphone that little highlight area right there that's the same as this okay same as this that means it's recording so it was set to record it wasn't like uh the other times when i just installed it and i forgot to hit that button it was recording but you listen to the video there is no audio why is that mama okay now let me give you the premise behind the video and i'm gonna let it run just for now then i'm gonna stop it in a minute but there was a young lady. She contacted me. I've been helping her with a mortgage since 2012. They're still in their home, basically due to her tenacity. She's still in her home. However, she's been able to refinance. When she refinanced, I'm going to stop the video right there. When she refinanced the uh, property, uh, it was with a friend. But the friend came calling and saying they wanted their money. And that's what she's going through now. So she called me because they're doing the tax credits. She received her tax credits and she called me and said that her um, tax agent, you know, she brought it in to him and her tax agent said, <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. I ain't never seen nothing like this before. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, God. Wait, wait, hey, Bob. Bob, Bob, Bob. No, 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 no. Trust me. You're going to want to see this. No, no, no. Tell him you're calling back. No, no, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. Tell him you're calling back. All right. Come here. Come here. Come here. And that's what a tax agent did to her. Ladies and gentlemen, let me do something for you because some of you, I can't teach you anything. That's not what I'm here to do. I can't teach you to know what you're talking about and to stand on your mother square. I can't teach that to you because you have to know it. Stop going to these people acting like they have all the knowledge. But they have more knowledge than I do. That's right. A peanut has more knowledge than you do. That's why you got to educate yourself by doing your own homework and research. God. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see this right here? IRS, IRS tax topic, topic number 453. IRS tax topic 453. Keep that number in your head. This is your best friend. When you go to this website, and I'm going to show you later in the video, you're going to right-click, you're going to go print, you're going to print as PDF, and 
there you go, you'll have this in document form. Carry it with you. Do it in Espanol if you speak Espanol. Do it for your friends. Start writing off all your debt. Your phone bill, your light bill, your gas bill. 1099 see that junk. Remember there is no money. That's how you support the stupid economy. So, ladies and gentlemen. As a matter of fact, there is something I need to do uh, in the, because I go back and I listen. Uh-oh, hold on now. We're going to get to you in a second. This is what I'm trying to do. It ain't letting me do it. Okay, one second, y'all. We got to bring this up. That's why it ain't letting me do it. Oh, okay, I see what I see. what's going on now. Hooey, I was like, what's going on? And it was like, I ain't telling you. Be like, I ain't got to have you tell me. I'll figure it out for myself, mother. Okay, you see this? This is my voice. What's happening is my voice is sometimes too loud. And so you can hear the crackling of the system because the system is like, shut up, mother. And I'm telling the system, don't. who are you talking to? Do you know I have the power to shut you off? And the system like, <laughs> I got the power to shut myself off. Okay, so I, me and the system, we have an understanding. All right, so adjusting my voice during the during the actual audio audio should be okay without any problems, without any headaches. If there are headaches, whatever. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's do something here so that you guys understand what's going on. Pay attention. Bad debt deduction. That means you can deduct bad debt from your taxes. Any kind of bad debt? No, there are certain types of bad debt you can deduct. Business bad debt. That's why you all do it as a sole proprietor. When you file your taxes, do it as a sole proprietor. Don't do it as a taxpayer. Do it as a business. Why? Why do you want to do it as a business? See, I thought <laughs> if you could only see that I'm thinking that this is the IRS page because I was going to show you where it talks about business bad debt. But anyway, you can do what you want to do. Don't be asking me. Go do your own research and you figure it out. I'm tired of people questioning me as if I don't know what I'm talking about. Look, let me explain. I had a guy called me up yesterday, said he watched my video, said he had a lot of respect for me, whatever. No, 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 you guys need to understand. The way the side effects of the disease and everything is right now is I don't care about anything. I just simply don't care. What, what Are you saying you don't care about nothing? What I mean by I don't care, I only care about the things that are necessary for me to care about my relationship with the God that I serve, not the God that you serve. I could care less about your God and how you serve him. That's your business. You do what you want to do. You do you. But I'm going to serve my God who calls himself Jehovah. And he's said to be the God of the Bible. I, ha I was talking to a guy yesterday. No, was it yesterday? It was Friday. And as I'm mentioning Jehovah, he then mentions... Uh, because I said I called on the name of Jehovah and my God and he referred to Jesus as being a God also but he wasn't referring to Jesus as being a God also he was referring to Jesus as being the God ladies and gentlemen first of all Jesus is my second best friend and my brother and I say that sincerely I don't know why people believe that Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe in the Lord and now reigning king of God's kingdom, Jesus, the true Christ. I don't know why they don't believe that Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in Jesus. He's the one who commanded us to go there for and... Police! I mean, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. He's the one who told, commanded us to go there for and knock on doors. It was Jesus who made that command. Jehovah didn't give that command. Jesus gave the command to go and knock on doors. That's why we do it. Is because Jesus commanded us. He said that he would be with us until the conclusion of the system of things. However, pay attention. Jesus announced to everybody that he came here to do the will of his father. If he and his father were the same person, then that statement would have no meaning. No, 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 don't shut up. Everybody want to explain things. I don't want you to explain it. There's nowhere in anything that he's ever said that would explain that. He said that he came to do the will of his father. 
He says, not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So if Jesus and his father were the same, how could he claim to be wanting to do his father's will and not his own will and it not be his will if he and his father were the same? And that sounds like a tongue twister. Are you trying to confuse us? No, but that, that whole belief thing sounds confusing to me. So I believe what the scriptures say. Scriptures say Jesus is God's son. And I believe that Jesus is God's son. Scriptures say Jesus died and was resurrected. And I believe that Jesus died and was resurrected. Scriptures say that Jesus was anointed as king of God's kingdom. And I believe that Jesus was presented to the true God according to the book of Daniel and anointed as king of God's kingdom. See, I believe these things because the scriptures say it. I don't care if you don't believe it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not here to talk about your beliefs. I'm talking about who I am as a person. This started off with me talking about not caring. See, the disease, the side effect of the disease has me to the point to where I don't have empathy, don't have sympathy. I don't care if you're bleeding to death next to me. Will I help? Yes, of course I'll help. But it's not going to fade me. But that's okay because I knew it was coming, ladies and gentlemen. Because of what's getting ready to happen on this planet, I knew it was coming. I knew we were going to get to a point where I would not have any feelings towards individuals, towards situations. No sympathy, no compassion, no empathy. I knew the time was coming because I had been given knowledge of this, ooh, gone on 20 years ago. And I'm grateful for that because I can't handle death. That's why I don't go to funerals. Yeah, 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 that's why I didn't go to my mother's funeral because she knew and she knew better than I did that I can't handle death. I went to my best friend's funeral. I didn't go to the burial site. I'm grateful I didn't. But my best friend died. I cried for three weeks straight. I had a young man that got shot and killed in the apartment building that I ran. And yeah, that a lot of pain. So don't go to funerals. Do I go there now? Can I go there now? Will it bother me? I see funerals all the time. I don't go, but I see funerals all the time. Here's the problem. The fact that my mind says I can't go to funerals, yes, it will bother me because my mind is already set on the fact that I can't handle funerals. However, it won't bother me to the point to where I shut down because that's what I've done every single time is shut down. So it's difficult. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether or not you understand it. I'm just explaining to you what the facts are. So the gentleman called and he was telling me what he thought and he brought up some points. Look, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever call me, do not try to teach me anything because you will piss me off. Okay, and I'm not joking. This is this is not me being corny, sarcastic or coy. I'm telling you the truth. It's not that I cannot be taught something. My mind says that if you are supposed to be teaching me, then you wouldn't be watching my videos. If I needed to learn this, I'd be going to you and watching your videos. So don't call me or email me trying to teach me something. You can contact me and ask me if I heard of this or if I've heard of that, or was I aware of this or was I aware of that? I don't have a problem with responding to you. One lady did just that. Asked me had I heard of, and just like the <laughs> that video where I did with the stupid, uh, and I said stupid, attorney from the board, uh, Federal Reserve Board, gonna try to sit up there and use that. This section has been terminated. Man, go back and read the section that I'm pointing out. You see it talks about a whole paragraph. Ooh-wee, it covers a whole lot more than circulating notes. And by the way, circulating notes are nothing more than uh, the notes that they talk about in 411 where the banks use for making advancements. Remember, we are Federal Reserve Banks whenever you hear the phrase any Federal Reserve Bank. That's us. We're included in that any. But not here to talk about that so just like that attorney tried to come at me with something stupid I if I hear something that I know isn't right 
then I'm going to speak up on it. But if I hear somebody say something that I know it's not their information, I can tell by the way they said it that they are not convinced of the information. They're just repeating it. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're speaking to these people, they can tell whether or not you're regurgitating something you heard. Now, it shouldn't matter, but yes, it does matter if you're regurgitating something you heard. Okay, for instance, when I say that I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses, then you can automatically tell that I'm a Jehovah's Witness. The Jehovah's Witnesses out there who listen to my videos, they know when I speak that I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Why? Because there are certain things that they can pick up on in conversation. There are certain things they can pick up on when I talk about Jehovah and his dear son, Christ Jesus, or declaring the good news about his kingdom. That being the chief goal and main goal of every Jehovah's Witness on this planet. No matter how old they are, no matter how frail they are, no matter how impaired they are. Their chief goal is to declare the good news of God's kingdom. We have almost 8 billion people on this planet. And our goal is to talk to each one. Say what? Really? You didn't know that. As a Jehovah's Witness, our goal is to talk to each one of those 8 billion people. That's impossible, but it doesn't mean that we are not going to try. That's why we knock on every door in the neighborhood. Because we're trying to talk to everyone in the neighborhood. Why? Because we do believe that we have information that the individuals should be aware of. The same as I do these videos. I have information that you all should be aware of. 16 minutes of your time. Now we're going to get into this video. This video is 26 minutes, so it'll be 45 minutes as opposed to the original 26 minutes. Bad debt deduction. Ladies and gentlemen, the premise of this video is teaching you how to turn this bad debt into a credit. Let, let, let's get to the end. Let's just, we're going to segue all the way to the end of the video. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a deduction and you get to the end of the year, and because of the type of deduction it is, bad debt deduction, you can now carry it forward to the next year that means it becomes a credit and if it's done properly you're gonna see it I'm gonna point it out if it's done properly that credit can be turned into a refund now it's just one aspect of tax credits okay one aspect but let's talk about the bad debt deductions the young lady called me and said the guy said he ain't never seen it before it doesn't matter if they've seen it before Ladies and gentlemen, stop bringing your paperwork in to these idiots. Stop bringing them into the bank. Stop showing people your trust. Declaration of trust and certificate of trust is all you need to show these idiots regarding your trust. And when it comes to bad debt, all you need to do is do a statement of bad debt. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to do a statement. We're going to talk about that later. What's a bad debt? Well, grandma, I loaned my grandma 500 thousand dollars grandma said she was gonna pay me back as soon as she got her social security check and grandma ain't paid me nothing and now i'm stuck and so and she told me she ain't got no money to pay me that she she could never pay me she she lied to me so what do i do well i write grandma a letter and say grandma you my grandma you blood and everything and i but that, that's okay i ain't never gonna be around you ever again you ain't never gonna see me again but I'm going to forgive you because I need to I need to get something from this transaction. Since you say you can't pay me, the best thing I can do is just forgive you of the debt and do my 1099A and my 1099C. Cancel that month debt and then get my de automatic deduction, Grandma. It's an automatic deduction once I forgive you. That's why it's called a bad debt deduction because it's automatic when I forgive you. So I forgive you, Grandma, and I got to fill out a 1099-A and a 1099-C, and then I got to do it on my Schedule C. That's right. That's why I write it down. I don't have to show nobody no paperwork. I just have to write it down, but I have to keep my documentation. I have to keep my records. I have to keep my accounting. Yeah, we didn't have a verbal contract, but what I'm going to do, since we didn't have a verbal contract, Grandma, I'm going to take it. I'm going to put that contract in writing, and I'm going to send you a copy. You ain't got to sign this contract. I'm going to memorialize our agreement. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to segue for a moment. And I'm going to let you guys know about a situation. I'm not pleased with this situation. The individual who's involved in this situation is pissing me off. 
In 2018, a young man came to me. He says, look, I got something I want you to see. I need your help. I said, okay. He told me I was incarcerated. A group of us got together and we figured out how to add an arbitration clause to a contract. And we did one with the government and we ended up going to Congress and getting a Congressional Act passed. Okay, no problem. Ladies and gentlemen, I said, go ahead and send me, send it to me. And when I get a chance, I'll take a look. Can't promise you anything because I got too much going on and too many other people ahead of you. But I'll take a look. A couple of months went by. He called me again. I'm on my way to Walmart. I remember it like it was six years ago. Anyway, and he said, hey, have you got a chance to look at it? I said, no. I said, but look, I'm on my way to Walmart. And it's a 15-minute drive. And I'm going to be there for at least an hour. So you got my attention until I get back to my house where I'm going to lose the signal anyway. Says, all right. So he tells me about the situation that they got together. They created a contract. They sent it to the attorney general. They added their arbitration clause after doing research. And they did their research to prove that the arbitration clause, blah, blah, blah. And the attorney general gave him a letter, gave him a letter saying that he was going to respond. And he never responded. So they went to Congress. Hey, Congress, how you doing? And they went through Rand Paul and Mitch McConnell. That's right. Mitch McConnell, that Mitch McConnell. They went through both of them. And Rand Paul wrote the bill. Because you can only do your remonstrance through a senator. And they went through Kentucky because... They had individuals who knew Rand Paul. The individual who knew Rand Paul, ladies and gentlemen, all of a sudden died. Okay? And he was the guy keeping everything in order. He was the guy who helped them get this to Rand Paul and to Mitch McConnell. He was pretty knowledgeable about the law and everything, and that's why they went at this angle. Well, the bill passes, both House and Senate. And it goes before the president, and President Obama says, Veto. Veto? Man, we ain't Spanish. What you mean, Veto? That's not Spanish, you idiot. That's Italian. Look here, moron. It's a Latin language, you, you idiot. Sorry, I apologize. And they sent it back to the House and Senate. Now, here's the problem. Because it's a petition for remonstrance, yes, that's what it was, but you, you have to read it to be able to understand it was a petition for remonstrance. These gentlemen were claiming that something had been done wrong and that the law permits them to recover if they have an agreement and it worked out as a release-dismissal agreement. Release-dismissal agreement comes from the 1866 Act, the Civil Rights Act of 1866. And I don't believe that they knew quite well that that's the act that they were using. But I knew that they knew that that's the act that they were using. When they did their research, they did release dismissal agreement. It originally came from the Act of 1866. So they knew they were using the Act of 1866. I told you guys, get to know the Act of 1866. It should be your best friend. Well... It went back to Congress. Congress could not let that fail. Why? Because they had a contract with the U.S. government. The Attorney General said he was going to respond, and he did not. He became obligated under the terms of the contract. Remember, the contract requires a duty to respond. The Attorney General accepted the obligation to respond. And there you go. The Congress passed the law because it would be infringing and impeding the obligation of contract. That's why they overrode the veto. It went back to the president. Now, remember, it's an overriding of veto. It doesn't have to go back to the president. But they did. They talked him into doing an amendment. Now, remember, because they override the veto, it became law on the enactment date. It is a private law. But when they overrode the veto, they were doing an amendment. It went back to the president. He signed it. It was supposed to go into effect... I think it was March of the following year. But by that time, Trump was in office. And then Trump came in, and Trump refused to sign it into law. 
forgot all the little ramifications and then but I told I had to let them know that's only the amendment that's not the original act the original act passed because they overrode the veto the amendment didn't pass and Congress didn't override that veto because Trump vetoed it okay they say the other thing was the first veto of Trump's uh, tenure and that's not true the first veto was the private law doesn't get counted because the first veto was on public policies and public issues so that went back and it sat there and they were wondering why Congress didn't do it again now some people ask well weren't you afraid of getting got by somebody I said yes that's the first thing that I did is I tested out all the waters first thing I did was I went and I studied arbitration now those two two years uh, that they had me those 22 months they had me in the uh, facility that's I was studying arbitration thousands and thousands of pages of documents being sent into me in arbitration thousands of cases well not thousands of cases uh, probably about 160 different cases on arbitration I was having my people send me everything on arbitration I needed to see where the judges were how they ruled how they needed to see everything that's what I was doing I went to school you're going to take my time. I'm going to make my time worthwhile. And that's what I did. And so what I did is when I got out, because we had already done several motions for him in court, I spent $500 of my own money to file a motion. And that was done horribly wrong. Okay, we filed it in the court. It was done horribly wrong. And so we've been working, I've been calling offices and calling the government printing office and all these other companies and communicating with him. Long story short, let's get here to the present time. When I am released, I communicate with him immediately. Told him we we're getting started. Told him I had some things to do with SACOM, but we'll get started with his stuff immediately after that. Once I finished with the SACOM stuff, I started calling again. He contacts a broker. He didn't do this on my part. He did this on his part. He contacted a broker. When he contacted the broker, the broker told him that they had this firm, this fund that was willing to invest in his portion of the passage of that law, of that bill, of that act. And they offered him, because they told him it was... 4.8 billion and he wasn't considering the fact that the act allowed for interest to accumulate so it's at seven billion dollars now um, and so they offered him two billion dollars and so he told me I said no go ahead and take that because we can get that back and I you hear me I said we we can get that back. Well, the thing is, we had a 40-60 agreement. I take 40, he takes 60 for helping him. Uh, we contacted, and I have the recordings, we contacted the government printing office, spoke to the supervisor. I told you guys about the supervisor and told you how he was a very respectful person. His name was Thomas. I forgot Thomas's last name. But Thomas was very respectful. Um, a man who does not deserve anybody doing anything stupid you know Thomas was respectful he communicated back and he did so in honor and so I sent him a copy of the audio of the recording of that call and a copy of the audio of the recording of calling the National Archive office and a bunch of other places and the next thing I know he goes missing so that's who I was doing the video on you see, because I had made him one of the CEOs of one of our corporations, AmeriLegion. So those of you who've had some delays in AmeriLegion, it's because of this. Five weeks ago, this Tuesday, would be the last time I communicated with him, aside from the following week thereafter, where I received an email where he's saying he's okay. And telling me that he would get back with me two weeks from then that was two weeks ago that he was supposed to get back with me and had not I've sent him text messages and emails letting him know that it's not about the money 
It never was about the money. See, this is one of those individuals who told me that he was my friend and I was his friend. And I told him about how I don't let people in. I don't accept anybody as no friend. Not, no, no, not since Kevin died and Kevin is my best friend and nobody will ever take that young man's place. And the friend Tori I had, who was the next door neighbor of Kevin, who I, man, best friend, uh, one day just walked away from the friendship. So I don't do the friendship thing anymore. But he said he wanted to be friends and he said he counted me as a friend. Okay, fine. I started to let him in. And then he does this five week thing of not contacting. See, you guys need to understand, we were in touch with each other at least nine times a week. At least nine times a week. One day I called him nine times. And I even told him, I don't call nobody no nine times in one day. I said, but the information, I said, you got me going. You know, because he, he was asking me about tax credits and everything else, and I was helping him with a couple other things. And he does this. And it has bothered me. Not because of no stupid money. I was going to tell him, I only want 2%. I could care less about 40%. Because it ain't about that. And he hasn't contacted me back. He hasn't emailed. He hasn't done anything. What he doesn't know is somebody did tell me before they knew that, you know, any of this, somebody told me that they had had a conversation with him while I was on vacation. And he said that if he ever got this money, that he was going to take his mother and his wife and they were getting out of Dodge. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what she didn't know is that I had spoken with one of his friends that he had introduced me to and whose number I had. And he told me that, oh, yeah, his mother is on his way uh, to him right now. So I have her Facebook account. I'm going to go ahead and FaceTime her and see, you know, if everything's okay. Because we thought something was wrong. We thought he'd been arrested or something. I mean, because we were going pretty hard on the DOJ. And he was contacting his attorneys, really telling them he needed a certified copy. They found the certified copy. Just wouldn't tell us where they found it. We know he signed a non-disclosure agreement. But the fact is, that doesn't interfere with our agreement. They're going to say, well, you guys didn't have an agreement in writing. Ladies and gentlemen, didn't have an agreement in writing. What the? Really? Oh, well, then you guys don't understand about the arbitration agreement. That's in every email. And when he became a member of the organization, that arbitration agreement is a part of that. Oh, no, we've had an agreement. The arbitration agreement, the electronic arbitration agreement that was sent to him, that was sent to him on purpose because I get tired of people trying to get over on me. We got recorded phone calls of these conversations. We got documents being filed. I have witnesses to our arrangement, our agreement. I'm not a fool. Like I said, it ain't about the money. I am tired of people thinking that there is money. And for him to let those type of figures get in his head and for somebody to whom he don't know but just met, that's what they do in Hollywood, people. That's why I stay away from Hollywood and their ignorance. There's a show out there right now, and it's called Unreal. That show is exactly how Hollywood is, and that's exactly how lawyers are. The very same thing you see on that show is how Hollywood and lawyers act all the time it's called unreal and the show really is unreal all right um what i can tell you for a fact ladies and gentlemen is that i know that he signed an undisclosure agreement nobody has to tell me that nobody has to prove that to me because i got to know him since 2018 we got to know each other spoke to his wife uh, even had a short conversation with his mother but I got to know this person you can't talk that long and not get to know somebody that's how I know he wasn't faking it that's how I know he wasn't playing me because that's what I was checking now people can say well what if he was a good actor nope sorry impossible okay impossible I just hate it when people prove me right when people 
show that they're just like everyone else. So, I, I, I don't, any of y'all even think about it. When I tell you that I don't trust people, I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you I don't trust people because people can't be trusted. Most people are full of shiznik. I didn't say sputnik, I said shiznik. Most people are full of it. They can't help it. It's a backed up system and they're so plugged up because they got a stick stuck up their anus that they're full of it because they're plugged. So, sorry. I didn't need to have that image in my head. Now, I was thinking about doing another video because I segue to this. I just wanted you guys to know what's been going on in the background, which has caused me a great deal of stress, and I kid you not. But let's get back to talking about bad debt. And I'm going to go ahead and let the video play, but while the video is playing, I'm going to go ahead and explain to you what's going on in the video. I'm highlighting that if somebody owes you a debt, you have a bad debt. And if somebody owes you a debt and they cannot pay and you cannot collect then you have the right to write it off as a bad debt. Generally, to deduct a bad debt, you must have previously included the amount in your income or loaned out your cash. They said generally, not every time, generally. If you are a cash method, so we're not talking about the cash method, we're talking about everybody who's done a 3115 form and is an accrual method taxpayer that's how they get to carry it forward and credit themselves for the next year you generally can take a bad debt deduction for unpaid salaries unpaid wages unpaid rents unpaid fees unpaid interest unpaid dividends or similar items such as arbitration awards ladies and gentlemen with an arbitration award, you do a 1099A, 1099C. That's what I've done on each one of my arbitration awards. I've documented everything, sent them their notice, documented the proof of service on sending them their notice. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all needs to pay attention. If you got a bad debt dealing with, sorry, I got to make sure that this goes back up. Dealing with wages, rents, fees, interest, dividends, arbitration awards, court cases. Let's say the judge put you in jail. Let's say you stayed in jail for five years. Do you need to do an arbitration award? Hold on. Let me make sure y'all understand something. It's a lot better if you did an incarceration contract. Sent that to the judge. Because that's evidence of what them doing to you as being illegal. But if you just say they held me in jail for six years and they did it illegally and you don't have any evidence of the illegality, then no, you don't just get to write that off as a bad debt because that could come back to haunt you. You need documentation. Documentation is everything. The first thing Maxine Waters taught me, documentation is everything. Ladies and gentlemen, documentation is everything. Even this requires that you document it. For a bad debt, you must show documentation is everything. You must show by documentation that at the time of the transaction, you intended it to be a loan and not a gift. You see how I highlight? You must show documentation is everything. Study this document, people. Study this document because this is telling you how to get your money when somebody owes you money and you can't collect you write it off and now you just cancel your taxes look at how much money you save if you do this every time not just once or twice a year every time rents unpaid salaries wages fees interest look ladies and gentlemen how often do you pay interest okay now we're gonna go down to the next oh those of you guys hold on see that schedule c 1040 Schedule C 1040, that's where you have to document it. But it wants you to do so as a sole proprietor. Why? Because it wants you to do it as a business bad debt. Why? Because individual bad debts, that's not good for you. Okay? Uh, sole proprietor is the same social security number. Same tax form. Okay? Same tax forms. Same, but you're going to do it as a business bad debt. Now, notice here, ladies and gentlemen, 
it is not necessary to go to court if you can show that a judgment from a court would be uncollectible. How many of you got an arbitration award and you can't go to court and get that arbitration award? Then write that stuff off. You just need to show, see, you need to show by the surrounding circumstances that it is worthless and will not be repaid. But it says you must establish, ladies and gentlemen, you must document it, document it, document it, have the records, do the accounting, document it. You guys need to understand, that's what a Mara Legion is for. Now, I just explained to you the situation why Mara Legion is running a little slow, and I apologize to you guys for that. But the last situation is I've been having some issues with a credit card. I got hacked. And because I got hacked, ladies and gentlemen, with my credit card, it has interfered with us by a week of not being able to process 1099As, 1099Cs. Because they are being done a particular way. So apologize to y'all for that. Now what we're doing right now is we are doing above top secret. This is a video that I watched. I do want to implore you guys to watch above top secret the technology uh what is it development and because you'll see that this guy is telling you everything that i've been telling you about why we have not developed why we have not gotten there okay see oh and i messed up here so i, I remember this hold on now hold on now let's skip forward above top secret okay behind disclosure the technology behind disclosure he talked about the guy in the 1970s who had the car that ran off water, that they confirmed it. He had uh, patents and contracts with the Department of Defense. And now that guy ends up dead. And just before he died, it is said that he said, I've been poisoned. Okay? Why? Because you just got to watch that film. I promise you, you'll get it. But it's above top secret. The technology behind disclosure. Hold on. Hold on. Cause we ain't got to do the whole thing. We I didn't did all the talking at the very beginning. Let's go. See, redress right did the video. That was me. Uh oh. Hold on. You cannot collect on a partially non-business worthless debt it has to be fully worthless so you just have to document it as fully worthless but you can deduct it on your taxes ladies and gentlemen let's say i have bad debt from this year and i need to deduct it on my taxes what if i don't deduct it do i have to deduct it this year well it's a bad debt so no you don't have to deduct it this year you can hold on to that deduction to next year but next year it's not a deduction anymore what do you mean well when you carry it forward carry it forward carry it over carry it over carry it forward carry it forward carry it over. which one is it a carry forward or carry over ah they're the same thing so when you carry it to next year oh that's easier just saying the word carry oh because john Kerry, i couldn't stand that he was a stupid oh no not john Kerry. oh shut up. okay ladies and gentlemen you carry it forward to next year, it becomes a credit. It's not a deduction anymore. You carry it forward to next year, it becomes a credit. It's not a deduction anymore. You carry it forward to next year, it's not a credit. But I thought you said it was a credit. You carry it forward to next year, it is a credit. But if you carry it forward to next year and you're not able to explain why it's not a credit, then it's not a credit. That is not a deduction, that is not a credit. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be able to prove by your records that it was a bad debt and that by the end of the year you took and carried it forward because you did not want to exercise your right to deduct it the previous year once you carry it forward it's an indefinite carry forward until it's exhausted it's a bad debt uh we'll do it next time all right, now we're going to continue to move on. Deducting a bad debt. Okay, 
ladies and gentlemen, the IRS already showed you an IRS tax topic 453. You deduct a bad debt by writing it off on a Schedule C. But people are not doing that. And because people are not writing it off on Schedule C, K Sarah Sarah, okay, they get what they deserve. Okay, a, look at this deducting a bad debt in exchange for tax credits. Ladies and gentlemen, by carrying it forward, see, that's why I'm cutting this show. A deduction is a credit. That's what you all need to know. They, but when you put stuff like that in concerning taxes, they're always going to send you every place else where you need to be. Deductions can reduce the amount of your income before you collect or calculate, excuse me, calculate, collect, anyway, calculate the taxes you owe. Credits reduce the amount of tax you owe or increases your tax refund. So a deduction reduces the income and a credit reduces the amount of tax you owe. Ladies and gentlemen, a deduction reduces the amount of tax you owe. Do not let them play that game with you. A deduction can reduce. So this is not the only way. The reason why, pay attention, deductions can reduce the amount of taxes you owe. Why? Because if you're paying income tax and it reduces the amount of your income by you deducting that, then it also reduces the amount of taxes. So a deduction reduces the amount of taxes you owe. And there's nobody that can argue with that. The same as a credit reduces the amount of taxes you owe. Excuse me. Hello. Anybody there? You guys understanding what's going on here? My hope is that you do. Now, this section right here, this is credits for individuals. Then you have credits for individuals and companies and all that on the same section. Okay, so, see, business credits and deductions. Business credits and deductions. And you're going to see IRS tax topic talks about business credits. We just talked about it. You just saw business bad debt. Deductions for individuals and credits for individuals. Do you see that? But don't think that these are the only credits you can have. This is what the tax preparers will tell you, that you only get credits from these things. Child tax credit and child care and all that stuff. That's a lie. Ladies and gentlemen, again, a deduction gives you a tax credit. A tax credit gives you a tax credit. That's the point. That's what you must understand. Okay, we're almost finished, y'all. Let me go further. Oh, and when you claim federal tax credits and deductions on your tax return, you can change the amount of taxes you owe. See, it says you can change that. You can change it, Jimmy. You just go right ahead and change that, Jimmy. You know, change that too, Jimmy. That's not no good, Jimmy. You are good, Jimmy. Well, I, 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 I try. I, I just take only one or two cars a day. Credits and deductions for individual, credits and deductions. Ladies and gentlemen, how credits and deductions work? Claim federal tax credits and deductions. Okay, what I'm telling you here is go here. It is irs.gov forward slash credits, C-R-E-D-I-T-S, hyphen and, A-N-D, hyphen deductions. Okay, that's where I'm telling you to go to learn more about credits and deductions. Okay, let's keep going. Like I said, we're just about done. Hopefully we can get done by 50 minutes after, but I don't think so. Cause I took the time, the segue time, to tell y'all about that other situation. So I apologize to y'all for that. Cause I was trying to make this liggity quiggly, liggity wiggly slip. Be one second, y'all. I just need it to go here and we're going to go back to IRS tax topic and oh that's me showing you how to make a copy of it so watch this I'm going to show you guys real quick how to copy the page Now watch, I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit print. So I'm going to find a white area. 
hit print and then I'm going to do save as PDF and I'm going to hit save and then I'm going to make sure the name is what I want it to be so I can remember it see but this is how it's going to look okay just that simple and look I type the name and I hit save and there you go it's saved now this tells you what forms you need to fill out ladies and gentlemen and most of you guys are not reading it you're not understanding what's required so let me go back to tell you about this phone no nope, that's too short too short oh yeah this is the bad debt so uh, it tells you the forms that are necessary it tells you the forms that must be complete it tells you that you have to do a statement you have to do a statement okay the statement right here the statement the statement must contain so this is what your documentation of your credits must contain this is what AmeriLegion is doing for you those of you who are using AmeriLegion okay now look we're gonna go here be one second I think that was it ladies and gentlemen I think that was the extent of this video now as a recap the video how to turn a bad debt deduction into a credit done 1014 which was three days ago it was 1016 but it was three days ago because I put it up on the 14th okay no it was it was two days ago it was put up on the 15th I know I didn't put it up the same day so that that's correct all right ladies and gentlemen the way you do it and you just write off every debt every bad debt every loan you've ever made you've loaned money to the bank and you don't even realize it all you got to do is document that you apply title 12 section 412 that's all you got to do is document you can write off your bad debt and get yourself some tax credits and those of you who owe the money to the IRS you can then come up out of that hole okay you can use tax credits to offset debt by assigning the tax credits but you have to do the work ladies and gentlemen you have to do the work don't call me and ask me what to do how to do when to do why to do because it ain't my marmaduke okay ladies and gentlemen we told y'all we wanted to stop pretty soon and we're gonna stop okay that's what we're gonna do we're gonna stop so y'all have a good day i hope this information proves beneficial arrivederci y'all